right, good morning. It's like quarter to four and we got some snow. I say we got a uh, solid five inches, maybe six inches of snow. It's light powdery snow. It's not heavy snow, but we're gonna run up and uh, start pushing it around. All right, looks like Daryl's here already. Using the S130 with the eight foot Snow Wolf. The S130 is a pretty small machine. It's a 49 horsepower Kubota. But with the snow tires, it does really good with an eight foot blade. Why here so early? Because there was a mouse in the house. So you left because there was a mouse in your house? Yeah. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> I don't like rats. I don't like mice. Oh, okay. Did you do the whole back parking lot already? This whole, I did this whole entrance, this part, that part, not the whole back, but just this half over here. All right. Okay. Just do all the drives and then go around, all the way around and do that building over there okay. while you're at it. And then you got to switch plows and do all the city sidewalks. All right. I got to leave by six, so. Huh? I got to leave by six, 630. My daughter has cord at 8.30. Well, you better hurry up then. I'm hurrying. So the reason Daryl's in the small machine is because this machine is having problems. It keeps blowing fuses, and then the whole machine shuts down. It's got a bare wire, loose ground, something wrong with the computer, something electrical. So it'll start up right now, but it'll die. I'm going to try to run it. That's why you always have to have backup equipment because it's guaranteed when you're snow plowing, equipment is gonna break, stuff's gonna break. So you better have backup equipment or you will be in big trouble or have good friends with plow trucks. You wanna start that, you can start it, it'll start up now. It's running already. Oh, yeah, but thanks for the idea, yeah. yeah. The old reliable 7.3 still chugging along. Daryl's got a little bit to go over there. And then we'll see if this thing stays lit or not. fun while it lasted which wasn't very long 
not very long at all. That's it. All that needs to be done, make sure you plow by this basketball court where my machine broke down right there. Yeah, yeah. I only got like I'll once. Clean that all out. Yeah, clean that all out and then just salt everything and that's it. Well, at least I got the skid loader out of the way. It's not really gonna bother anybody there, thankfully. We got a bunch of driveways that we do too. Driveways are just so fast and easy with the skid loader. I know I timed one earlier this year and it was, uh, man, I don't even remember, it was about a minute. He's pretty much done with this driveway. Just gotta clean up this little bit here. And uh, that's it. Easy. Very easy. This one's done. If you stop hitting the curbs, that would be nice, but it's done. And here we go again. Boom. <laughs> stop it, Daryl. Thank you. Daryl makes me nervous. He's right next to that brand new car. Daryl's pretty good in a skid loader, but once in a while he has a tendency to hit stuff. He's developed a reputation over the years, just believe me on that one. I used to call him Daryl the Destroyer when he used to run my skid loader all the time. And I call him that for a good reason. all these cars really 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 nervous he's just gonna back drag away from everything All right, Daryl just cleared these five driveways right here. And that was like, I don't know, probably between seven and eight minutes, something like that. The big advantage that a skid steer has over the truck is obviously being able to just spin around, turn around right where you are and push the other direction instead of having to back up, push forward, back up, push forward. And I'm gonna go grab some coffee because Quick Trip's open now. Everything's going good. I don't have that much plowing anymore like I've mentioned before. And there's no pressure at all. I get my coffee. I say good morning to Scott. Man, I miss my regular routine. I can't wait until April. There he is. Morning, Scott. Good morning. Bright and early today. Bright and early. Big day? Uh, we're just messing around with the snow right now. Oh, that's a busy one copy of your receipt today? Nope, that's it. All right, you're all set. You have a great day. We'll see you next time. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Ooh, watch your toes. Oh, thank you. You remember which it is? Yep. All right, I'll meet you over there. Go ahead. So this right here is the house of a very, very important person. I'm not gonna tell you who it is, obviously, but 
try to take good care of this person. Really good care. See how that front wheel's off the ground like that? That's not the way it should be. Anyways, he's just gonna clean up by the road and then move on. I'm gonna get in my truck here where you can hear me. So you saw Daryl's front tire was off the ground. So what he was doing, he was putting too much down pressure on the blade. And when you lift that front wheel off the ground, uh, there's two negatives. Obviously, uh, you're only getting traction from the back tires, and you're wearing out the blade a lot faster than it needs to be. So when you plow, all four tires should be on the ground at all times. You should have just enough pressure on the blade where you're getting a good scrape, but your front tires remain uh, in contact with the pavement. All right, Daryl's gonna plow this lot here. Go in the entrance, clean the entrance because the snow plow truck, the city truck plowed it back in. Right. And then switch the plow. Okay. You should have time, it's not even six yet. No, it's, not. no. Right. it's like five to six still. Okay. Daryl's got to leave at 6.30, but he should have plenty of time to get the walks done too. It's just one pass down all the sidewalks, back and forth. All right, we're gonna take off the eight foot blade and put the five foot blade on for the city sidewalk. It's always easy. Daryl's gonna hit something right here, watch. Right about here. Oh, he missed it. Maybe he'll get it now. Boom! <laughs> I knew he would get it. I always get stuck right there. There's a little water cap or something right there. It's 6.15. Okay. You need to leave now or?
And just a note to anybody that does shoveling work, when you shovel the sidewalks and you see that the parking lot has already been plowed, don't shovel your snow onto the parking lot. It's just a little tip. All right, so I'm just waiting for Daryl to get back so I can say goodbye to him. Bugs is salting, and then we're out of here. It's a nice morning. It's about 10 degrees. It's cold, not windy, so definitely tolerable. All right, Bugs is just finishing up salting here. We're pretty much done. If you notice, the salt that we use, it's kind of a greenish blue color, and it's treated with a chemical called, I think it's called ice ban. I think I'm right about that. But anyways, uh, there's a couple of things about it. One, as you can see where you're putting it down, that is a benefit for sure. The other benefit is it's supposed to improve ice melting capability, you know, lower temperatures and a better melt rate. But honestly, I have not noticed any difference in performance and not trying to knock it maybe it works maybe it doesn't uh, but i won't spend my money on the treated salt again it's just not worth it uh all right i'll see you later do you want to go to lunch later sure all right uh i'll call you okay like about one o'clock all right